Um, but anyway, going back to, to relocation, that was the design. Get the land, get rid of the Indians, put them in the city, eventually there'll be a big part of the melting pot and you won't need the Bureau of Indian Affairs, which is an outdated, outmoded organization that originally started under the Department of War and now is a part of the Department of Interior. And by the way, there's anywhere from 15 billion to $100 billion missing right now. In 1998, a lawsuit was filed by 300 tribes demanding records on the money that was taken from the sale and leasing and extraction of natural resources on Indian land because the BIA was supposed to be our caretakers because we couldn't take care of ourselves. And mind you, the U.S. government, the U.S. Constitution in part is based on the Seneca Longhouse Constitution. Did you know that? And we were considered the savages. Benjamin Franklin took that from the Iroquois Longhouse Confederacy Constitution in part. And we're going to publish that soon, hopefully, just to show people that we are not the savages that they depicted us as in those days and certainly aren't now. And I remember 20, 25 years ago in South Dakota, there were signs on restaurants that said no dogs or Indians allowed. Yes, 25 years ago. Yes. They made the decisions. And I, and I was lucky in 1996 to be on the Salamanca Reservation when they shut down Route 90, and of course nobody heard about 98, nobody heard about it. The Salamanca, I'm sorry, the Cattaraugus Reservation shut it down because George Pataki was trying to tax American Indians, trying to tax their gasoline and tax the sale of cigarettes. Now they can't do it. Why can't they do it? As a part of the treaties, these are sovereign nations. Our nations, American Indian reservations, and our nations are sovereign governments. We have a government-to-government -government relationship. I don't mean to yell, I'm sorry. A government-to-government -government relationship with the U.S. government. We have our own constitution. We have our own laws. We have our own police force, and we have our own judges. And some of our, our nations have their own passports and their own license plates, and the U.S. government has refused to acknowledge that. We are a country within a country. And did I answer your question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to point oh, out that the, they have adopted uh, uh, civilized Yes, absolutely. Right, absolutely. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, the point I made about Cataraugus is that I happened to be there when the women came down from tribal council and made a decision to declare war on. To do that educational part. And a, a lot of, uh, hopefully our newspaper is going to cover some of it, but it, we want to be apolitical. We want to make sure that people don't construe our, music, our, our newspaper as a political newspaper, because it's not. It's simply going to be about, and if you read it, you've read our last, we, we've been, this is our second year with this newspaper, and um, it's a lot of facts, a lot of information, and hopefully people will have a better picture of who we are. Yes? I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have had some previous conversations with Robert, so well, we have um, we have tutoring with Tony, and we have a young man named Joe Conley, who is just who has just graduated from Ohio State. He's a, he's an engineer or a scientist at NASA, and he comes down and tutors. And so we always, there's always room for people. It's on Wednesday at six o'clock. Uh, and we're, again, we're gonna continue it throughout the year, but uh, next year, hopefully, we'll have more tutors and we have more opportunities to offer. The, the classes we had this year, we had 12 to 15 children. And general, ideally, you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the child that you're working with. And about most time, we only have an hour and a half. We provide the food for them because we know that there's a high rate uh, of, uh, of uh, poverty in our community, I would say 60 to 70 percent fall under the, pov the federal poverty guidelines in our community. You know, that's a lot. That's a lot. When our children come here to eat at our center and they get a hot meal, they're happy. You want to see some happy faces? <laughs> you can see see that. Yeah. 
Do we call Tony to set up for tutoring or the deputy? Yes, Tony would be the person to call. And what was the other part of that question? The Hunger Center. The Hunger Center. Well, we, we have a dilemma now because we're going to be moving. And as uh, probably as late July, they, they have sold the building that we're in, which is a really great location. We may be moving uh, to a uh, above a bar because we don't have any choice and it's a temporary location. Um, it's, it's a block away from the Indian Center. It has all the, uh, the space that we need except for the food. We don't have a place to put the food now. And according to the um, land bank, the food bank rather, uh, you have a criteria that you have to meet and that has a separate room, locked doors, and et cetera, in order for them to sell you food at 14 cents a, a pound. Incidentally, we haven't been able to buy food for the last two months because we don't have that 14 cents a pound to give. We don't have any monies. The current uh, funding that we have right now is ANA called the Administration of Native Americans. And again, they're, they're feeling a cutback too from the feds. Um, and that's for a needs assessment because we don't really have the numbers or statistics to, to present to people when we're, when we're uh, uh, applying for funding. The second grant we have, and I didn't even mention this, is 40% of Native Americans die from tobacco. 40%, that's 40 people out of 100 die from tobacco. That's a lot, that's a lot. The tobacco industry is targeting our young people as well. They target minorities, and they target them because start them young, buy that poison, you know, let them keep smoking that poison or chewing that poison until they die, and that's income coming to them. So the monies that we received, which may end because I understand that the, uh, the state of Ohio uh, is going to be looting the monies that were set aside for the Tobacco Foundation that was living, literally living off of the interest, so the principal wasn't being touched, are going to be taking that principal, and that's sad, and that's sad. Because again, 40 out of 100 of our people die, 40. That's a lot, that's a lot. So our, my, my main concern, my biggest concern is that we survive, this organization survives, that uh, we can provide the services, the human services, we can provide the paralegal work that, that des desperately need in our community. We can provide whatever services that, that, that are, either we can do, we can provide through um, referrals or, or provide for the uh, community as a whole right there at the center. Uh, we just had a, a, a nice community meeting. Um, our community is, again, a little divided. We have 44 nations, and historically, we never got along anyway. So it's, it's uh, and, and, you, and you know what, I, f I found this to be true with a lot of other groups in Cleveland. I, I actually, in the 70s, we applied for a grant for, with the Span Am. Anybody ever hear of Spanish American community? You know, it's a youth program. Well, that was a no-no for the Indian Center because they didn't want to do anything with anybody in the 70s. And uh, we, got, we, we, uh, we worked together, we partnered, and I, I was relieved to find that their community had the same problems we had. You know, and, and I thought that you know, I, our, our community had, had so many problems that I thought, geez, you know, are we the only ones with these kind of problems? And we're not. So it's kind of reassuring that we're all human and, and that uh, in our goal, there's no, we don't have any membership in terms of if you have to be a member of our organization, if you're a member of somebody else's, don't come to us. We don't have that kind of membership. We don't care who you are. And especially if you're not Indian, we'll still provide services. But it's open to everybody in our community. There's no separation. And, and that's how it was in the, I remember when I first started, you know, the Navajos and the Sioux, those are the ones that got all the, the food or the clothes that were donated to the center and what was left went to the other tribes. And I made a point of that from my administrations on, that would never happen, that we would service and provide what, what we could, and it was never going it was never going to be based on who knew who or who was in favor of who or what tribe you were. Though that there's an equal distribution of everything, period. And a lot of when I first started, a lot of people didn't like that, but that's the way it is. They knew my position from the beginning. So any questions? Yes. D. Brown, low key compared to what I've read so okay. far. It was very devastating. What, oh. what would be more um, The Holocaust. The American Indian Holocaust. Have you ever heard of a you know the book called Custer Died? Yes, Vine DeLorean. Okay, my sister Absolutely. That. Absolutely yeah. good. Anything that Vine DeLorean, he wrote God is Red, Custer Died for Us, and he is just a tremendous author, him and his father. You know what, I, I, I have a list, and I, I should have brought it, it's called the American Indian Holocaust, and I forgot the author. 
and it's a tremendous book because it, it really goes into the history uh, factually, yes. You bring it next, well, no, you're going to bring it next. We'll work out a way to get it in August. Okay, well, I'm available. If you're interested in hearing about the history of American Indians, I have, I have, I'm developing a new curriculum, but I have some curriculums that I've used in, with my students. I'd be more than happy to come out and share that. So, uh, you know, it might give you some insight. I mean, I, I think for the most part that, that people are sh not surprised, they're shocked when they really hear about the history. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you'll and including the mascot issue, we can talk about the movie that's coming up. Um, so I wanted to say that, but the other thing, um, and Doris, you know, really sort of touched on it too. Um, I think that you're not to at all cut short anything that you're saying today, but um, I, I, my ear is in listening to you today. Is also, how can we work uh, with you and with the center? And um, I think probably I'm not the only one that would love to hear what kinds of Okay. Well, our, our biggest need is to take some of the, the work off of us, myself and, and Tony. We need another person. We need to hire someone else, and that's the most important. If, if there's any kind of a grant available for that, that would, that would really help us out. We're, we're exhausted every day, and I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> my, my wife will tell you that. <laughs> no, we don't have any. We have one person that writes a grant for us in Columbus. And, uh, and he deals with federal grants. We don't have any local. We know that there's opportunities here in Cleveland. We know that, uh, and historically in the past, a lot of the churches have helped organizations such as ours. Uh, we know that there's a uh, office in the Hanna Building that deals specifically with grants, with grants. We need operational grants because we're running out of money and we're running out of time and we're gonna be in, we're gonna be in trouble. And, and if we go out of business, there isn't anybody in our community, any other organization that can provide the services that we provide. Yeah. Um, some of our churches belong to the social action group, which is in the district. And I have gotten a few emails from some of the churches that have been It's in the back. It's in the back of the newspaper. It's fathers. We have a concert. We have native artists. Mitch Walking Elk. He's great. Great songwriter. Father's Day weekend. Friday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday is the concert. Saturday and Sunday is the powwow. You know, it, actually, it, it, it's kind of sad because if we had the money, the logo and name would have been changed already. The, the, the obstacle, the biggest obstacle that we have is the filing, filing fees and um, the, pardon me? The fees yes, and that's anywhere from ten to $15,000. We have a number of people that have committed to, to this, this uh, and, and I would have to...